Mr. Chairman, Excellencies, Councillors, fellow elected officials, delegates, just over a week from now, Secretary General Antonio Guterres will be in Geneva to address our 2024 session of the ITU Council. This historic visit comes at a pivotal time for technology, an unprecedented moment for digital innovation. When countries are racing to 5G, 6G, when we're seeing breakthroughs in quantum computing, when artificial intelligence is pushing the boundaries of scientific progress for people and planet. That's why people were lining up outside the ITU last week for the AI for Good Global Summit that was co-hosted with the Swiss Confederation. Hundreds of people were waiting outside, outside of CICG to be part of this AI moment. Inside, there was a palpable sense of both hopes and concerns. The hopes of this young man, Luis, from Portugal to communicate with his loved ones after ALS took away his ability to speak, but not his voice, thanks to artificial intelligence. The concerns of many ministers from developing countries and others about being excluded from critical AI conversations. Reconciling this tension between hopes and concerns, between the challenges and the opportunities of digital technologies as they race ahead is the test before us. It's our greatest test yet. The two core goals of the ITU strategic plan, universal connectivity and sustainable digital transformation are showing us the way forward. Following the roadmap, we're looking to support the inclusive, responsible, and sustainable digital transformation of the world, and it has to be matched by our own transformation to make sure that the ITU is fit for purpose. Since we met last, we've ramped up our transformation in tangible ways. It includes change cases from our change makers, that resulted in six key areas of action. From implementing safe and responsible AI internally to enhancing our recruitment procedures. Our transformation team has now developed a comprehensive roadmap that this council will discuss. We've also set up key performance indicators that will help to measure our progress and for us to be able to report back to you efficiently. Key to ITU's transformation is reinforcing transparency, accountability, and compliance through a, through a dedicated oversight unit. We've also been working on an oversight charter that is before this session of council. This charter aims to hold us to the highest integrity standards when it comes to internal auditing, investigation, evaluation, so that misconduct and fraud are prevented and effectiveness and efficiency of our activities assured. As you are aware, last year we faced challenges in delivering our timely audits for 2022. Our auditors identified a number of areas where we needed to improve. We have collaborated closely with the auditors and we've worked hard to live up to the requirements of this highly demanding process. We're looking forward to this council approving the 2022 accounts. This council will also review the financial operating report and auditors report for 2023. We're happy that our auditors have been able to assure you that our budget implementation numbers for 2023 are accurate as they continue to complete their audit procedures. We're also pleased that in 2024, this year, we will get the ITU back on track in the auditing cycle. Financial transformation goes beyond the immediate upgrading of our financial management. It's a major part of ITU's overall 
transformation plan. We've strengthened our workforce and we've optimized processes in terms of managing accounts, disclosures, and reporting. Our updated financial rules and regulations will also be tabled to this session of council and they will enable us to move forward with the right controls and standard operating procedures in place. Our goal is to provide you with a crystal clear view of how ITU allocates its resources. Ultimately, we are working towards fully results-based management where strategic, operational, and financial planning comprise a well-integrated management framework, ensuring that resources are most effectively directed towards achieving the outcomes that you expect from the ITU. But first, the basics, which include ensuring that we live within our means. As a result of prudently managing our 2023 budget, we've managed to make a small budgetary surplus, and we propose to use it for immediate priorities to help implement the decisions of the WRC 23, to help further strengthen transformation, to upgrade our website, which is our window to the world, to support the organization of the World Telecommunications Policy Forum. And I would say as well, we have managed to unlock additional funding for the ICT Development Fund. Among the more challenging aspects of ITU's transformation has been our headquarters. I think it's fair to say that we did have fruitful discussions at yesterday's council working group I think those discussions help to set a strong foundation for achieving a decision at this council. Ladies and gentlemen, let's remember that ITU staff, which represent 119 nationalities, is our greatest asset. They are the engine of our transformation. Becoming fit for the future also means encouraging more young people to join the ITU, as well as achieving gender equality in our workforce. Right now, just 8% of ITU staff on regular posts are under the age of 35, and 1.5% under the age of 30. That's why we're looking to expand our Young Professionals Program. We still need your help to get those last positions funded. And it's also why I created a youth advisory body in addition to the ITU Youth Task Force. This helps to ensure that we are taking into account the needs, the priority, and the voices of young people, the current and future generations. I'm also pleased to share that a new gender and youth office has been established as part of our transformation. If we want to go faster and further in our transformation, we must go together as one ITU. We heard you, and we are improving intersectoral coordination accordingly, including strengthening the intersectoral task force. One ITU also means coming together with staff, including, of course, our staff council, and I want to thank them for their great collaboration. And of course, coming together, staff and management through our monthly town halls. This helps us to be able to dialogue, to engage, to discuss, and to update each other and to find synergies as we look to the future. It's also about promoting skilling and upskilling through things like our learning lab series. And it's about management engagement through our last annual senior management retreat where we addressed key topics from empowering ITU staff to improving staff well-being. Counselors, this is how we see ourselves. For the world, there's only one ITU. And this past year, our union has been active in the UN family. And I think it's fair to say that we have made a positive impact on communities and people's lives around the world that will resonate for years to come. 
Let's start with our radio communication sector and last year's Radio Communication Assembly and the World Radio Communication Conference. From enabling many countries from the developing world to acquire new spectrum resources for satellite broadcasting to defining ITU's role in space sustainability. The agreements that were reached in Dubai demonstrate our unrivaled ability to facilitate cooperation and compromise while at the same time harnessing the potential of radio communications to its fullest. I do want to thank again and also congratulate the United Arab Emirates for bringing the entire world together at the Radio Assembly, at the WRC, and of course, let's not forget, you also held COP28 at the same time. The work into the next four-year study cycle period has already started in the run-up to WRC 27. It's well underway with visionary agenda items that will help pave the way for direct-to-device satellite communications and also help to establish the first generation of lunar communications. As many of you know, about 80% of the WRC 27 agenda items are space-related at a crucial time when the space economy is growing and the role of space in achieving the SDGs has never been more important. Turning now to our telecommunication standardization sector, which has been hard at work, continuing with industry, governments, academia, to develop international standards and numbering resources that connect the world and bridge the standards gap. Standards were front and center at the AI for Good Global Summit and at the first AI Governance Day that was held last week. Key actions were taken to build AI capacity around the world, to strengthen standards cooperation, including with IEC and ISO, most, most notably to stop the spread of AI-driven misinformation and deepfakes and to employ AI to help manage natural disasters. I think this helps to prepare us well as we look to WTSA 24. And I do want to thank India, a world-class hub for technological innovation, for hosting this key conference at a time when realizing the true value of standards is more important than ever to foster inclusion, to build trust, and confidence in digital technologies. Let me also mention that next week during the ITU Council, we will also be hosting the UN Virtual Worlds Day, which is another first for the UN. And finally, an update from the telecommunications development sector. Whether we help computer incident response teams to respond to cyber threats that continue to escalate at unprecedented rates, lead the work on warning dissemination and communications for the UN Early Warning for All initiative, especially in places like small island developing states that bear the brunt of climate change. And I will mention that this was um, showcased in front and center last week at the UN SIDS conference where the BDT director led the ITU delegation to that conference. It's also about continuing our important work when it comes to digital skills development, as well as our unwavering focus to make sure that everyone, everywhere, has access and can benefit from the power of digital technologies. This expertise continues to gain international recognition from our global e-waste monitor 2024, to our work on GovStack, to the next edition of our global cybersecurity index that will be coming out in the next few weeks. Of course, I must also mention our Girls in ICT Day, where we held the global celebration in the Philippines this year, again, showcasing and making the case of why it is so crucial to encourage girls to take up careers in the STEM sector. Up next, of course, is the Global Symposium for Regulators, and I want to thank our friends from Uganda for hosting this year's GSR with AI and the space economy amongst the key issues that will be debated at this year's GSR. As for me, I've made a point to really better understand 
the needs and aspirations of you, our members, as well as our many partners worldwide by meeting you where you are. From our regional office in Santiago, our area office, I should say, in Santiago de Chile, to Singapore, from Silicon Valley, to Beijing, to Kigali, I've prior prioritized listening as much as I can and brought back your ideas to the colleagues and team here at the ITU to ensure that we can help drive forward transformation as a team. As you can see, it's been an action-packed year, but our work is never done when one-third of humanity still remains offline. And especially not when far too many still find themselves on the wrong side of the digital divide because they don't feel safe online, because they lack the skills to take advantage of the latest tools, or because they just can't afford them. The paradox, and what I would call the injustice, is that this is happening at an unprecedented moment of digital innovation. Digital innovation for sustainable development was actually the theme of this year's World Telecommunications and Information Society Day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment to rescue the sustainable development goals. And it's a moment to refuse the status quo, and to show that we're committed to building a better future together. That's why our external transformation must be as ambitious as our internal one. And this ambition is reflected in the work of the Broadband Commission, where ITU continues to rally partners around crucial issues from affordability to 21st century financing. Our dedication is also evident in global, global forums from the G77 plus China Heads of State Summit to the G7 and the G20, where ITU was a knowledge partner of the Japanese and Indian presidencies last year, and where we engaged in the development and space-related tracks. We continue to lead by our expertise with the G7 and the G20 this year in key topics ranging from digital inclusion to digital government to AI for sustainable development. We're also collaborating with the G20 Brazilian presidency, as well as six development banks on digital infrastructure investment. Unleashing that power of partnerships is at the heart of our external transformation and our outward engagement. ITU is engaged on many fronts from early warnings to digital gender equality, to refugee connectivity. We've had important milestones during this cycle. There is the recent UN system white paper on AI that was led by ITU and UNESCO. It's an important tool to guide the international community as it moves governance from principles to real implementation. There's also, ladies and gentlemen, our green digital action that's been led by our Deputy Secretary General. And following a successful digital action track at COP28, we have brought together partners around tangible actions from reducing the digital industry's greenhouse gas emissions to implementing green standards. The Partner to Connect Digital Coalition has built lots and lots of momentum in the past few months and weeks with major new commitments that have been announced at Mobile World Congress, at the WISIS, as well as AI for Good. We are now close to 51 billion US dollars and 900 pledges strong. We've passed our halfway mark to get to 100 billion by 2026. These new commitments will help to provide meaningful connectivity to billions, millions in need. It's about connecting the hardest to connect. Many of them, of course, are young people around the world. And that's why GIGA, our initiative with UNICEF to connect every school in the world to the internet, continues to get more and more recognition and traction, including being part of the UN Global Digital Compact. 
And that brings me to our ongoing efforts to strengthen our engagement in UN processes and beyond. As the WISIS Plus 20 high level event for 2024 that was held in Geneva last week, I think it's fair to say that we witnessed once again the strategic value of multi-stakeholder engagement and our multi-stakeholder community that's deeply rooted in grassroots digital development. And as we approach the 20-year review of the WISIS that takes place next year, and as we set our sights on the Global Digital Compact and the Summit of the Future and beyond, I think it's important that we ensure that all processes are aligned and that they complement each other. Of course, we also need to leverage existing mechanisms and draw from the expertise and the know-how of the numerous entities and UN agencies involved. Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, we've been on our journey to make the ITU fit for purpose and fit for the future for the past 17 months. I think it's fair to say that we have come a long way and I'm very grateful to my fellow ITU elected officials and of course to the entire senior management leadership team that have been committed to this since day one. We still have a long way to go, I think it's fair to say, but the values that we share and the vision that binds us together remain the same. Connecting the world, using technology as a force for good, a rich and diverse membership, leaving no one behind. These principles go all the way back to the creation of our great union, which will be 160 years old next year. Earlier this year, we crossed a historic threshold with our ITU family now having more than 1,000 industry and academic members. This collaboration among government, industry, and academia is our DNA. It's exactly what we need right now to steer the union through this era of technological transformation, the fastest one yet. I'm reminded of President Nelson Mandela when he came to Geneva almost 30 years ago to address the ITU member states. He said, the information revolution sweeping the globe has the potential to open communication channels across geographic and cultural divides. His message was clear. Technology should unite us, not divide us. Let's heed to his call and continue to work together. Let's give every country an equal seat at the table. Let's align digital inclusion with the pace of digital transformation and bring digital development to every corner of the planet, to harness the potential of radio communications to the fullest, to realize the true value of standards, to strike the right balance between the benefits and the risks of emerging technologies, to make sure that the digital industry helps the fight against the climate crisis and doesn't actually contribute to it, and to rescue the SDGs. This is the ITU the world needs and the ITU we all want. Thank you very much.